Hello, everybody, my dear Max friends. I'm so happy to see you again. As you know, we have started a section which is called the Max Interviews. And first of all, let me say hello to Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Nice. Fine, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for being with us and sharing this interview. I think it will be very interesting for me and also for the people who will be watching us. Um, we used to record these videos uh, in Instagram Live. But since we were not able to share them in YouTube and then also to... Um, share them in our other platforms like LinkedIn, where we have most of our followers. I got the idea, let's record it in Zoom so that we can spread the word to more people. And that's, that's like an experiment today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but we are already used to many Zooms, so it's, it's, it's not a real experiment anymore. Today, we're going to speak with Rebecca Johnson about sustainability in the world of events. I met Rebecca about 10 years ago. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> when you were working for a DMC in Barcelona. And then we met again at IBTM in uh, 2019, before the pandemic started, where we already spoke, or you already spoke to me about your project that now is more than a reality. I'm happy uh, for you that you were persistent in following your passion and your intuition and to work with sustainab sustainability, especially nowadays and in our industry. Um, Rebecca has worked for DMCs for more than 10 years in Barcelona and her journey in sustainable uh, events began with the implementation from scratch of an ISO 2121 certified sustainable event management system at a well-known destination management company. Since then, she has supported hotels, event agencies, convention bureaus, and tourism office, offices to address their priority um, impact and generate a positive change for the local environment, society, and economy. Now she is a sustainability consultant, a trainer, auditor, and lecturer. Did I say it well, Rebecca? <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> perfect. Um, so let's go straight to the first question. Rebecca, tell us a little bit more about you, your professional background, and how you found your passion in sustain sustainability. Uh, wow, okay. Thank you, Valeska, for that really nice introduction. Um, yeah, I mean, as you said, I've been working in events my whole career. So I started in event management um, and moved into to work for a production agency, a lot of work on the Mobile World Congress. And then I went to a DMC where I was an event manager for a while. Um, but I was asked to start working on the ISO 2012 one for a sustainable event, event management, which just took over my role completely. Um, and that was really where everything started. Um, I learned so much and the more I learned, the more I enjoyed it and the more I could see how important it was. So um, it was something that grew out of a, a task I was given at work. Um, but really I had the opportunity to learn so much. Um, so I implemented that um, ISO 2012 at uh, three offices um, of, this, um, of the DMC. And then uh, since then I've also worked as um, an auditor for Travel Life, which is a certification, sustainability certification for hotels. Um, I teach at some universities and business schools. Um, and I also now I collaborate um, a lot with the GDS movement to support mostly convention bureaus uh, and tourist offices to implement sustainability strategies. So uh -huh. um, predominantly business tourism, but um, yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> so you are really into it, right? I mean, you yeah. are really already um, since when, when did you start uh, really working with sustainability? Um, so with the ISO, that was about, um, I think six years ago. Um, I was fortunate enough to receive a lot of training, <laughs> um, to support the ISO 2012-1, uh, management system. 
Um, and as I say, I've done lots of different things uh, since then that have enabled me to, to grow in, in competence. And um, yeah, so it's been quite a journey in the past six years. Okay, sounds really, really interesting. Um, what advice would you give a company who wants to ensure their business is sustainable? Um, so I think uh, two things. Uh, first of all, I would say it's important for the business to understand um, their biggest impact. So uh, mitigate for them to mitigate any of the negative issues um, and also enhance any of their potential for positive impact. So it's really important to do that analysis and, and understand where they're having an effect in the economy and society and the environment. And secondly, um, I tru truly believe that sustainability should be built inside out. Um, so it's really important to talk to employees and ensure that, that they are engaged uh, with, with the business objectives, with the sustainability objectives, and they understand where the company is going. Um, so I would say those, those two things are probably the most important. In fact, I, my second question uh, now would have been, what about making the employees part of the project with specific training? Because I think really the, the best ambassadors can be the employees of the company, right? Oh, yeah, completely agree. So um, your ambassadors are the, the ones who are communicating with all of your stakeholders. So it's so important for them to be involved, um, for them to feel um, that the direction of company is something that they can really engage with, that they will be talking to your clients, your suppliers, potentially uh, press, local government, anyone that you're involved with. Um, so it's really important that they understand uh, what the business is uh, hoping to achieve and how they can contribute towards that plan. Yes, oh, especially because you said it should be made from inside out. So if you don't train your staff and you don't explain them also, where is the company going within two, three years? It's, it's, it is so important that people understand the why of doing things, right? Yeah, totally. And I think... Um, there are many companies that, um, that want to get stuck into sustainability, which is great, but um, they, they're thinking about their objectives and perhaps how they'll perceive, be perceived by their clients or their supply chain. Um, but I think it's really important to start with the, with the employees because they're the ones who are going to be talking to these clients and these supply chains. So they really are going to be the best way for you to get your message across. Exactly. What are the biggest opportunities that sustainability provides for businesses in the events industry? Um, many. Um, collaboration opportunities, obviously competitive advantage, um, uh, learning and development for staff. Um, yeah, innovation, uh, efficiency as well, and sustainability is done right. I mean, the whole point is to make the business more effic efficient in, in all ways. So no waste, um, but also ensure that processes are effective. So um, when you're doing it right, it can even lead to cost savings, um, you know, and collaboration and understanding the latest innovations and technology can also help to support your business. So um, it's a business decision more than anything. And what are the biggest risks in terms of sustainability during events? Um, well, I think probably the biggest one is reputational damage. If you don't, if you're not doing anything, um, I think that's in this day and age, that's pretty unacceptable. So um, you definitely need to, as I say, uh, understand uh, your whole value chain and where your impacts are and be working on those um, for events. Um, the big issues are generally waste management, carbon emissions, energy and water. So you need to be thinking about how important um, they are, what, sig what significance they have for your business and how you can address those. And obviously your, uh, your employees as well, make sure they're, and anyone working for you, make sure they're being looked after. Um, I think in general, the risk is that, that you don't address, um, that you don't address your impacts and that's not going to be good for your company in the long run. Um, how far are we with sustain sustainability in Spain? Oh yeah, pretty good, I think. Um, lots of I've seen lots of um, convention centers and lots of hotel chains 
um, certified now. Um, lots of other types of uh, suppliers also going for certification, restaurants, caterers, uh, agencies. So um, yeah, I would say that there's certainly a lot of um, commitment and a lot of action underway in Spain. Um, definitely things have changed a lot over the past uh, <clears throat> Uh, five or six years I can see real commitment I have the opportunity to work with lots of destinations um, and we can see lots of commitment coming out of destinations now so yeah yes I agree with the hotels I mean I work with a lot of hotels in Spain and I haven't really done research but I would say like 70 80 percent of the hotels that I have been working with during the last six years they have a sustainable certification and uh, that do a big, big effort in, in learning how to be more efficient and more sustainable. And also not only talking about the environment, but also about social inclusion. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of topics when it comes to sustainability. And um, yeah, I think maybe the problem is a little bit like when it comes to a group. I mean, there are so many different companies and involved in, 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 in the operation of the group that maybe sometimes it's not in, in, uh, so easy to find all the different providers that are like on the same level, right? Yeah, that's right. But I think uh, stewardship is also important for sustainability. So, um, so long as you can, you know, locate stakeholders who also have ambition with regards to sustainability, um, then you can help each other to improve. Um, so yeah, maybe they haven't don't have a, as a developed sustainability strategy as you, but that doesn't mean that you can't collaborate and help each other to improve. Exactly. Yes, and um, I think there is a big difference between those who stay; they are committed to responsible business, and those who are actually really active in their commitment due to, to their convincement. How do you recognize each of them? Um, yeah, good question. Um, I think that it will become obvious as you start to work with um, a company, um, you, you will experience to what extent they're actually achieving the objectives that we mentioned earlier and, and what actions are in place. So um, that, that will become obvious, I think, once you can uh, ask a few questions and really scratch the surface you you start to understand really to what level um, is the commitment but I do also think that um, at the moment um, there's a lot of talk about sustainability at, at the end of the day um, we should also all, all try to focus on our own journeys um, and not of, often uh, these claims of greenwashing are used as an excuse for inaction um, and that's not good either. So, I mean, from that perspective, I think it's important for people to focus on their own journey and help each other to improve where possible. Yes, I, I totally agree with this. Um, how can tourism and sustainability integrate with a repurpose to generate value for the community? Um, many ways. So I think it's important um, when considering events and tourism to always think about the community until now um, they have not been considered so much but yet they are such a huge stakeholder um, of the destinations where our events are taking place in so um, it's always important to bear in mind what effect is this having on them and how can we use the event or tourism to generate some kind of positive outcome for them so is that through jobs for the local economy is it through education raising awareness on cultural issues um, raising awareness on small business community um, on environmental issues waste management biodiversity how can we use the content of the event or the event itself or even the tourism to leave a, a long-lasting legacy a long-lasting positive impact for the de for the destination the residents that live there Yes, and probably now after COVID, I mean, we are more, even more aware about the impact because, I mean, especially in Spain, we have so many tourists. I think it was in 2019, we had 84 million tourists yeah. in Spain, which is a huge impact at the end of the day. So we really, really need to do something 
about it now, right? Um, yeah. Before yeah. it's too late. And, and I think that this is the right way. And the more companies are involved, the more we get used to it also in a private way, because at the end it will be like, no, it will be normal. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, so the, the tourism and events needs to, needs to be thought of as, as part of the local, the local community and the local ecosystem if you like and not something that happens um in addition to it so it's important to try and incorporate that in the planning of events and tourism as well um it, tourists come and go and events come and go but we should be trying to encourage them to leave some kind of uh, positive impact for the local community as well um, you are a sustainability consultant trainer and auditor specializing in tourism and events Tell us more about how you provide guidance and help with sustainability certification. Um, so I've implemented the ISO 2012-1 um, already, so I'm very familiar with uh, how that one works and also 14001, which is very similar as well for environmental management. Um, I've also worked with, um, with Travel Life as an auditor. Um, I... Um, perform many of the assessments at the annual GDS index each year. Um, so I have quite a, um, a, a quite built up quite a, an array of uh, knowledge on, on how to perform well in the different types of certifications that exist. Um, I've also done completed education on the GSTC, um, which I know you're going to uh, do as well. Yeah. Um, Biosphere, um, I've also um, completed education in G the GRI, Global Reporting Initiative for Sustainable uh, Reporting on the SDGs. Um, so quite a few of those official, I'm very familiar with quite a few of those official frameworks um, that destinations really uh, need to prove their competence um, their continual improvement and, and generally confirm the prestige of their sustainability strategies. Mm -hmm. So if, if a company uh, that is listening to us would like to get in touch with you, um, is that possible? Can they contact you, send, the, send you an email, ask for some Yes of, course, yes, of course. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I have my own blog as well. So um, my blog is um, greenshare.solutions. Um, if anybody would like to read some of my pieces on there. Um, also Rebecca Johnson on uh, LinkedIn. Um, I'd be delighted to hear from your colleagues. Perfect. Yes. And is there something you would like to add at the end of this interview? Um, apart from saying thank you to you um, for giving me this opportunity, um, yeah, I think I would like just like to say that uh, sustainability is a journey. Um, and the important thing is that uh, we all get on that journey. It doesn't really matter how, um, but, but that we're all starting to get on the journey and make a difference. And I would really encourage anyone to, to take that step and uh, help their business to bring positive impact. Exactly. Thank you so much for your um, daily work in helping companies from the tourism industry and especially the event industry to learn how to be more gentle with the environment. I think now it is still a big effort for many companies and many people, but one day and hopefully not too far, uh, this will be normal and we will harm less the planet, which is from it's our planet. It's, we only have one, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the moment where the future starts and we can all be part of it. Um, so thank you, Rebecca. I, I really uh, think it was very insightful. I hope also very much for the people who are listening to us. Um, soon we will go on summer holidays and we will come back uh, with some very interesting interviews in September, in interviewing destinations, hotels, our CMC partner in Spain, um, and we will come back with some surprises. So we hope to see you then. Happy summer to everybody and um, hasta pronto. Happy summer. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.